Welcome to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, the award-winning financial services and business advisory podcast that challenges your old school business practices and the traditional business suit culture. Our guests are industry professionals and experts who will challenge you to think beyond the suit and tie while offering you meaningful modern solutions to help you enhance your company's growth. I'm your host, Dave Kane. Employers have to juggle a lot these days, especially in the area of HR compliance. In addition to the usual concerns like paid sick leave, the Family and Medical Leave Act and compensation, business owners are being confronted by a slew of new considerations like the legalization of marijuana, generational differences, and whether it's okay to vape indoors. Even though today's guest says she has seen a lot over the course of her career, she has said that this is the most HR activity and legislative updates she has ever seen. Renee West, Senior Human Resource Manager at Ray & Associates, is here with us to tell us what she thinks all these changes mean to our business owner. Welcome back to Unsuitable, Renee. Thank you very much, Dave. Excited to be here. You know, it's right. There's a lot of things uh, going on out there. That you is know, very um, true. Uh, I understand your your family is going to be listening to this podcast, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, what what advice did they give you before for today's kickoff? Well, my teenagers were very vocal in saying, "Do not embarrass us." Well, they said, "Don't embarrass yourself," which meant, "Don't embarrass them." That's right. So, so. Yes. Um, you know, in the intro, we uh, we talked about the few things that are uh, uh, disrupting the, the workplace as far as a compliance issues, so let's jump right in. You know, um, we see a lot of these uh, vape, uh, vapor, uh, cigarettes, e-cigarettes. Um, I don't know if manuals have caught up to those policies, but what's going on in the industry with that? So that's a, a great question. It's a very hot topic right now, as you know. And as people might not know, um, there really are not a lot of regulations as to the process of what is approved and not approved. So a lot of companies really are holding on doing any type of updates to their policies. Um, the e-vaping or the vape cigarettes are not protected by the, or not in, the FDA has not approved those. So employers right now are dealing with probably their employees coming up and saying, well, we're not allowed to smoke inside, but yet Joe's over here using an e-vape. So how does that impact the workforce? So we're just waiting for some future regulations to come out and more practices as to how to incorporate that into policies. You know, take that step further. A lot of uh, companies on their campuses don't allow uh, uh, smoking. Yeah, obviously, you go outside the building and you still can't smoke on grounds, but vaping maybe changing that a little bit. That's true. That's true. So it's definitely, we just need to stay tuned and see what comes of the next steps. But right now, for a best practice, a lot of employers are basically trying to mimic what they have from their smoking policy towards the e-vaping until they know further. You know, we've had uh, over the years several guests on uh, Unsuitable on Ray Radio that had uh, concealed carry. Uh, weapons on them when they uh, were were interviewing here and of course uh, you know we kind of let that slide we let that go I mean that's why we're unsuitable uh, but uh, what's uh, what's going on with the concealed carry in the workplace and and that's definitely a concern with workplace violence as you hear in the news there's seems to be an increase in the number of workplace shootings and just shootings in general so employers are really you know, looking at that from a safety standpoint for their workforce uh, of enforcing you know, no concealed carry. Um, there's a lot of regulations around that and there's a lot of gray areas. So companies need to do what they feel is best to protect their employees and that might involve um, not having firearms even in cars at parking lots in factories as well. So. Businesses just need to think of the safety of their employees. Yeah, okay. So, so far we're 0 for 2. I gave you two <laughs> things, vaping and concealed carry, and I, I, I don't have a, uh, uh, a response or I don't have right. a solution yet. And it's just kind of hanging out there. It is, and that's what, what we're talking about right now, all of the different updates and compliance and different areas that are in the news right now. There are so many gray areas where we're just waiting for the result or what the next steps are. So many HR professionals are 
saying, okay, well, I think we should be doing this, but we need to wait until we hear further direction. So a lot of what we're talking about today is in the process of being further defined. So right now we wanna be sure that we're just bringing up these topics so they're on the radar. So maybe still a little bit of education going on within uh, organizations about what all this stuff means. Correct. Uh, let me hit you with another one. Uh, uh, medical marijuana is legal in the state of Ohio and in many other states. Right. And how are employers to, to deal with that now, that now that it's legal? And that's a great question, and I actually presented to a group yesterday, and that was one of the top questions that we had from the employers of, what are we allowed and not allowed to do? You know, I can hear your kids now. Oh, boy, my mom's <laughs> talking about <laughs> right, marijuana. Because, right. And, and a lot of companies are wondering, should we update our policies? Should we look at the drug-free workplace? How does that impact our, our safety here? And there are still some gray areas. Again, as you mentioned, it is medically approved. Um, however, there are qualifications that individuals need to go through to be able to utilize that. They have to have a, a chronic condition that is approved. They also have to have a doctor that is licensed to be able to prescribe it. And they have to go to a licensed dispensary as well. So there's a lot of qualifications that go into that, but there's still a lot of gray areas as to how that impacts moving forward. Sure. So we're kind of at the beginning phases of it right now. You know, I, I'm trying to think of an industry out there that where the use of medical marijuana would be acceptable in the workplace. Delivering financial services, I can't imagine, you know, somebody going out uh, at lunchtime and getting bixlered up and come back in and doing, you know, tax returns or, you know, a banking transaction, um, maybe listening to, you know, some Bob Marley. It just doesn't, just doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't. Especially those companies that might have uh, forklift drivers or people that work on machinery. That's a concern from a safety standpoint. How can that impact the workforce? So, you know, there's, uh, there's three things that I think um, we just have to continue to, you know, dig through, fight through, listen, be on the cutting edge. That's correct. Now, you know, this is maybe a time for a break for some of, uh, talk about your entrepreneurial uh, activities been going on lately. I understand yes. you're on the cutting edge of a new service for um, HR services. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Yes, so we are very excited to launch the HR consulting segment for the firm and our team is focused on providing value-added services to our current clients and also new clients as well to help them with the HR ever-changing landscape from offering assistance to help strategically recruit key individuals into their organizations, uh, providing best practices for hiring, also helping on the compliance end, which is a very big need right now with the um, increased awareness of compliance. So looking at helping to compile employee handbooks, reviewing policies, and um, helping to review their personnel files to be sure everything is filed as it should be. Uh, we want to be a provider to help these employers as HR is always changing and we want to come in and be a value to them so they can focus on their key duties that they need sure. to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. And again, a lot of this is in response to um, uh, interviews and discussions uh, with our clients and with our network where, you know, again, the race for talent is, is, is so challenging out there that maybe there aren't enough HR professionals to you know, to go around or unaffordable. And consequently, I, I think probably a lot of our clients where somebody's wearing double duty, maybe the controller's also in charge of HR, which which probably not trained in HR, but just right. kind of right. uh, adapted to that. So you guys can step in Definitely. and be a very effective resource at uh, that fits within the budget. Yes, definitely. We're, we're very customized. And again, it's helping the individuals focus on those key duties. And if it can be as expansive as two to three different parts of the HR compliance service, or it can be one service. And our goal is to work with the clients and help them to determine what is the top priority and work through that and provide solutions. 
So you could even sit down, uh, let's say that I gave you a buzz or dropped you an email and say, I need some help, and you could come in and, and help educate uh, myself and maybe my team on the issues we talked about earlier, concealed carry, uh, vaping, medical marijuana. You could, you could work with the company to develop policies that that fit with that company. Yes, that's very true. We, we our team has uh, interaction with the Ohio State SHRM Council and we're very active and are aware of a lot of the discussions that go on at the State House in reference to regulations. So we can offer a very updated um, opportunities to move forward and, and be compliant based on what we're hearing at that higher level as well. Sure. You know, and I'm certainly a novice at this, but there's state HR issues and and federal HR issues and policy. Is there one that trumps the other? How do how do we navigate that? That's a great question. So traditionally, the federal always trumps the state, and I'm not saying trump for any particular reason, but I'm just saying that that yes. is normally trump how card. the process. Trump so card. override. Um, let's yes. use override. Let's use override. So. The, the main piece to understand is the state level can have just as much activity and the federal can have activity at a different level. So they always intertwine, but that's what's important is to know what is federal mandated and what is state mandated and how to kind of navigate those waters. You know, and, and the one that's in front of us now is certainly the marijuana issue where that's a state issue but not recognized at the federal level. Correct. So there's some conflict there that, mm -hmm. again, we have to fight and, and work hard to have right. uh, have that. You know, one of the benefits to uh, a business owner that, you know, has uh, good policies, HR, you have a stable workforce where when you go to uh, sell the business uh, uh, or expand the business, if you have a stable workforce, it just brings more value. Right, very true. So, um, paid sick leave, anything going on there? I understand there's a, some conversation on paid sure. sick leave issues. We're just, we're yes. just going to wrap, I'm going to rapid fire at you, so are, you better be ready. There are so many things right now, yes. So, the paid sick leave is definitely a, a hot topic that's in the news as well. Um, currently, there is a lot of discussion around having employers be required to provide a paid sick leave policy or program. Um, those companies that already have like paid time off or paid sick leave is not as big of an impact, but those smaller companies or companies that don't have a, a large workforce that might be mandated to provide this paid sick leave also are questioning how they would pay for that if that would be a regulation. And as you mentioned, from a retention standpoint and a talent acquisition standpoint, um, if a, one employer offers paid leave and another does not, it can sway that individual's decision as to what company they might go to. So it's important and it's concerning as to how that's going to impact even the, uh, the talent shortage now. So that retention is very key. Um, so there's a lot, again, this is another topic that is, we're still waiting to hear the final regulations, um, but it's, it's going to be an ongoing thing throughout sure. this year. Thanks. Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA. FMLA, yes. Talk about a vague, a vague area. That's definitely one that a lot well, of I HR have people have I questions, have questions for you. Um, that are still trying to figure that out. But basically, what we want to ensure is that employers are monitoring and tracking any family medical leave instances or qualifying events. Um, the, the understanding is a lot of times communication maybe from the employees to HR to management. A lot of times HR might not know of a qualifying event and it's concerning from a compliance standpoint if there was ever an audit. Um, so again, it's a heightened awareness of being sure that there are family medical leave policies that your managers and supervisors are trained on how to have a discussion if an employee comes to them and says that they need to have leave. So it's more along the lines of training um, in addition to compliance as well. You know, this, this always comes up, uh, you kind of attach it to maternity leave issues. And what are, what are some guidelines on the maternity leave area? I, I assume this, this falls under the FMLA. It does. It does. It currently falls under the FMLA. However, the stipulation with family medical leave is it's unpaid time. So that is a difference of it can run concurrent if you have a company that possibly offers short-term disability. 
but family medical leave is unpaid. And that's where this paid leave comes in and also looking at even paid maternity leave. So they kind of go hand in hand. Sure, sure. And again, we're hearing more as, as both parents are involved in, mm -hmm. in raising the child that maybe the, uh, uh, you know, both spouses want to take off time. Yes, yes. Parental Parent leave. Paren parental, parental leave. Parental leave, you. yes. And there are some states that do have that and it continues to, to grow as well. It, so. Is Ohio one of those states? Ohio is not one of those states at this point. At this point. Do you crystal ball, you think? Crystal ball, probably not for a while is what I would say. But tend to watch what happens out west and once it kind of starts there, it might move, kind of go. move to the east. But yes. Okay. Again, going back to your consulting services that your team offers, you could work with a business owner to develop a policy that uh, is in line with kind of the, the company's culture or the business owner's uh, ideas. Yes, definitely. Okay, Especially so. around any type of policy, we always work with, with the company, uh, keeping in mind their cultural um, atmosphere as well to ensure that we're compliant but also aware of the demographics of the workforce too. Sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. How... How are we dealing with that in the marketplace with HR compliance? That's definitely, if you turn on the news or listen to anything, there's probably not a week that has gone by that we haven't heard something in reference to an harassment claim or hashtag me too. So businesses right now are, are feeling the result of a more heightened awareness of what's going on out there. So there needs to be standard policies in place. There needs to be training that is done and we can come in to help evaluate what those policies look like, um, provide the training for those employees and supervisors and ensure that there is a standard reporting policy and procedure that if there ever is an issue that there's a process that needs to be followed. You know obviously a very very serious issue um, but the definition of sexual harassment has seemed to change over over the years, and I think you hit on it. Is it education definition? Correct. How do we? How do we? How do we beat this? And it's definitely it's it's an awareness factor, and that's a big piece of um, the the change. Where social media has definitely had an impact in this this topic, and will continue to have an impact. That if changes are not made, then I'm sure we'll see even more. Um, issues that will come forward with this. But we have seen a huge increase in just the colleagues that I've talked to and also clients that are focused on ensuring that they have these in place and that they are doing these trainings. So there's more being done that there maybe was done three or five years ago, which is a good thing. You know, go behind the scenes a bit. If, if there is harassment uh, inside an organization and management uh, was made aware of it and they elect to ignore, what impact does that have on the business and the business owner? That's Again, that's kind of a legal question, mm -hmm. but you know, there's some HR issues there that sure. maybe maybe you can address. And and that's that's a very that's a good question and a very um, concerning question too, that something that would be brought forward would not be taken care of and um, a company's reputation is definitely a big concern. Um, as you know, if a company is having an issue with harassment and they're in the news, it doesn't necessarily lend a positive image to that company or people wanting to go work there. Um, from an HR standpoint, we're here to take care of our people, and there needs to be a focus on doing what is right and uh, providing resources to be sure that's done. And if companies choose to ignore it, they can, but more than likely that will come back at some point in some type of lawsuit or something. So again, gives a little more credence to let's get those HR compliance policies in place in the training. That is correct, yes. Gender discrimination, uh, rules and regs and policies, what are you seeing in the marketplace uh, in regard to gender discrimination? Yes, and that's another, again, another area that's continuing to evolve. Um, discrimination has always been, you know, an issue in the employment landscape, but now as we move forward, there's discussions on what protected classes are 
and as part of the Civil Rights um, Amendment looking at determining what is actually a protected class. So there are discussions um, around looking at expanding that um, to incorporate not only uh, gender but gender identity and different facets of that protected class. So this is a new area um, and one that we'll be, uh, I'm sure, hearing more about as we move forward. Um, but it's definitely a, another hot issue that has a lot of gray areas too. You know, I, I hats off to uh, you and your colleagues in the industry. I think that there's probably more discussions going on uh, in, uh, in boardrooms and employee meetings regarding these policies than maybe ever before. Definitely. Maybe yes. now we're following it, but the uh, kind of the, the awareness. Sure. Workplace immigration. Uh, again, hot topic. Uh, you're right. I, my gosh, all these things. Uh, I know. You know. Five years ago, we weren't talking about this stuff. Right, right. And these are things we hear almost every day uh, in the news as well. A big part of the, the immigration piece is the increase that we're seeing in audits from, in reference to the I-9, which is the standard documentation that employees are to provide that states that they are United States citizens and they can legally work in the United States. Um, this is part of our HR consulting service that we offer in going into businesses to help determine that you have, number one, your I-9 is completed, they're completed correctly, they're filed correctly, not only for current employees but also terminated employees. And there's been a huge increase just in the last year of the amount of I-9 audits that have occurred throughout the United States, so it's more than tripled since the year before. You've got the floor. We've covered a few things, uh, just scratching the surface on, on a lot. Any, uh, any big things you want to want to share, kind of takeaways as we wind this uh, podcast down? Yes, I think the biggest piece for anyone that is in HR or has a company that, of course, uh, is concerned about all these updates is stay current to um, what you're hearing reach out to resources that can help you. Um, if you have questions in reference to policies or you need policies updated, this is a continual evolution of a lot of these regulations. And as we mentioned now, they're, they're not going to be solved all within the next six months to a year. And I'm sure if and when we do have more guidance on these, there'll be other things that will be coming up. So stay aware. Um, be sure that you are reaching out. That's the biggest piece that I can say. Just stay aware and be as compliant as you can with what you need to do. Great. You know, the issues we discussed, um, there aren't just issues. These aren't issues just for large uh, Fortune 500 companies. They trickle down to companies with one, two, ten employees. So this is a, this is a big issue. And as far as HR compliance, and again, this is where I think um, the service that you described in the beginning, your entrepreneurial spirit, uh, bringing forth some services for our clients that maybe don't have full-time HR staff, yes. they, can, uh, they can get in touch with you. You're in our new Philadelphia office. Uh, our listeners can get in touch with you by calling any of our, our uh, 12 Ray offices, jumping on uh, our website. Uh, yes. Drop the podcast a note, and we'll put you in touch. And uh, definitely, and you can come out. And, and again, I think you're a lot of fun, even off uh, off stage. You've been known to sing Bon Jovi on this <laughs> show, uh, probably about a year ago. Yeah, and I don't think I sang. I think I was you, getting you ready hummed. to. You were humming, yes. and then we 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 put a, a stop to it right away. Yeah, we didn't I want know. to embarrass it your was... kids. We didn't yeah, want to embarrass. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Our guest today has been Renee West, HR uh, manager with Ray and Associates. Uh, thanks again for joining us, Renee. We we didn't even touch about the fair labor standards, minimum wage compensation equality. There's a lot more There's we lot. can do, even with uh, employee screen screening, et cetera. You're going to have to come back and uh, yes. visit with us in the near future. Sure can. The world's certainly uh, changing, but with the help of HR professionals like uh, Renee. Employers can confront whatever obstacles that lie ahead. Listeners, if you like this week's episode of Unsuitable on Ray Radio, please like it and share it with your friends and colleagues. And don't forget to check out the video of this and past episodes of the podcast on the Ray & Associates YouTube page. Until next time, 
I'm Dave Kane, encouraging you to loosen up your tie and think outside the box.